What's up guys, this is Ash from Moscow Moto and I am here to show you the Reckless 80 version 3.0 revolver. We are so excited about this new update to the Reckless 80. And in this video, we're going to cover the unboxing, what the kit includes. Then we'll go over how to assemble the Reckless 80. You have many more options and customization with this kit, so we'll dive in on that. And then next, we're going to mount it to the bike. This should be generally your end result. And uh, let's get to it. This is an unboxing of what the kit includes when you order this new product. And uh, we'll also go through some assembly and continue then with fitment on the bike. There are many options with this new Reckless 80, uh, big improvements over the version two. So uh, when you open up the box, the first thing that you'll notice is the harness itself. It will come in three pieces. So you have the rear and then the two leg sides of the holster. So two leg holsters, one rear piece. You've got a Stinger 22, that's your tail bag. Two dry bags that go into the leg holsters. The standard offering for this product comes with two auxiliary pockets. We have a separate video that shows you how to mount that to either the backcountry panniers or to this Reckless 80 harness. So check out that video for sure. Um, the aux pockets also come with a dry bag. So two of those, a 20 liter dry sack. This is great for just carrying your trash or any sort of wet items you might have on a trip. And then of course, all your hardware and a tent pole pocket. So the tent pole pocket here, which mounts to the harness itself, two hardware packs to go alongside the auxiliary pox, and then your Reckless 80 hardware pack uh, with Loctite included as well. And last, but certainly not least, very important for this product actually is the heat shield. This is an exhaust heat shield to mount to your bike. So I've made it a little bit easy on us. I've already installed the center bolt on the left side of the harness, but I'm going to walk you through how to do this yourself and you'll replicate it on both sides when you're assembling the harness. So first you take one of these T-nuts that's included in your hardware pack and you're going to peel back this EVA foam just a bit and install it right there on this center bolt. So once that's done, you're gonna press the foam right back up against it. And as you can see, the T-nut is nice and exposed. Inside of your hardware pack, you'll find this little uh, bit of Loctite and you definitely don't wanna forget to Loctite all of these T-nuts. As I said, we have to check the fitment before we install the rest of the T-nuts. So right now, I'm not actually gonna put the Loctite in, but don't forget, put a little Loctite there in the center. And then you're gonna take your right leg of the harness and overlay it on top of that center piece. Now the angle doesn't really matter at this point, but you do see an arrow pointing to one of these four positions. All I'm gonna line up at this point is that center hole. So finding the center hole, I then have a washer and the bolt, and I'm going to just install that right in the middle of the harness. It's pretty helpful actually while you're doing this if you peel back the top of this harness right here. That way you can see what you're doing back there and leave this loose enough that you're actually able to swivel the holster around. All right, awesome. So now that we have that center bolt placed on both sides of the leg harness, you can just pick the whole thing up and put it on your bike. You wanna choose a position that's relatively close to where you'll ultimately be mounting the harness. So we do recommend that you use a rear luggage rack. This is a rackless system, meaning that it doesn't require side pannier racks. However, in order to have a firm mounting point on the rear of the harness, it is justifiable to put a rear luggage rack on the back of your bike. So choose a position that's relatively close to where ultimately you'll be mounting it. Position zero is the same as the Reckless 80 version 2.0, which is a fixed harness position. You don't have options on the version two. On the other side, position three is gonna be best suited for skinnier dual sports or dirt bikes. So now that you have those reference points, you can just check out where the best, most natural position on your motorcycle is. Here we're working with a Honda CRF 450L, which is a skinnier, smaller dual sport. So I wanna take a look here at where this lower connection strap lies. What you don't want is the leg to be angled here and your strap pulling down in another direction. Ideally, you want a straight line going from the bottom of the leg holster to the frame of the bike, which is where most of the time you're going to be mounting. So as I'm looking here, I'm gonna take a peek at where this arrow is pointing when I feel that the harness is in its most natural position. So if I'm placing this, that seems about right to me. I'm gonna choose position number two 
where I have a really nice angle coming up to the harness and going straight down to the frame of the bike. Okay, so now that we've checked on the bike which position the harness will be best suited in this case scenario, uh, we can go ahead and get started with installing the rest of the T-nuts and bolts on the harness itself. One more reminder, don't forget the Loctite. I'm not actually going to use it in this video because it's just a demo. So uh, for this particular bike, we're on a CRF 450L and I chose position number two that is best suited for this. So just like we did before with that center T-nut, you're going to peel back the EVA foam. You can kind of just even slip the T-nut in there without peeling it back too much. So get all of those situated and then we can get them tightened down. So once you get all four of those T-nuts situated, don't forget to lock tight each one. And then you're going to start on the outside of the leg holster here. So the outsides of the harness. So you have your washer and your bolt. And once again, uh, place it right on top of that T-nut. And it actually helps a lot. The reason we have it on the floor is so that you can press right against the T-nut and you can sort of feel when it's seated properly. But if you're having a hard time, one tip that I found is pressing on the back side. Just put your finger right there and then you just have a better feel with the tool. So leave those a bit loose until you get everything else situated and then you can tighten it all down starting with the center and sort of going across the entire harness. All right, so once we have everything tightened down, we're ready to rock. You can put the harness onto the bike and then get it back into that position, that ideal mounting position. Don't start with your lower connection straps. You always want to start on the back of the harness. That way you're not affixing this too far forwards and then you're going to have to adjust the whole thing all over again. So just start back here where you would ideally run it. So I'm going to take the end of the webbing and I just run it back through the rear luggage rack and then into the cam buckle. Or then you can release it and just pull the strap nice and tight. So just take a look all around the bike and make sure it's in the position that you want it. Tighten everything down and then we can go ahead and start on the lower connection straps. So after we get the rear connection straps in a good position, we can go ahead and start with the lower connection strap at the end of the harness. So this is a really nice, straightforward, clean line down to the frame of the bike, which is exactly what you're looking for. This will be different on every bike. Sometimes there is a little slit here right by the passenger foot peg. So just take a look at your specific bike setup. But in this scenario, everything looks really nice. I don't have a ton of buckling here at the top of the harness. Nice clean line from the bottom of the leg holster down to the frame. So now I'll just repeat the same thing on the other side and then tie up these loose ends. All of the adjustable straps on this harness system have a Velcro strap keeper. That allows you to take that excess webbing and cinch it up nice and neat right against the harness itself, preventing any sort of hazard while you're riding or interference with the bike. So now that we have all of the loose ends tied up, we've used our Velcro strap keepers here on the rear connection points and at the bottom of each leg. Everything's nice and safe. I just wanna talk really quick about heat. On this particular bike, I don't need to use this exhaust heat shield that's included with the kit because the bike actually already has one installed. It comes stock on the Honda CRF 450L. But in many scenarios, you need to install this exhaust heat shield. During your first ride, you'll want to check many times and make sure that there's no heat transfer between the exhaust and your bags or your plastics as well. KTM 690 and Husky 701 owners, we know this bike runs really hot. We have personally burnt plastics ourselves. And our number one recommendation for these bikes is to go ahead and put an aftermarket exhaust. That's going to prevent any sort of burn to the harness or your plastics coming from the exhaust. Okay guys, so that's it for the Reckless 80 revolver assembly and install mounting to the bike. Your end result should look something very similar to this. If it looks different, you maybe got something a bit wrong. Every bike is going to be a little bit different. That's one of the beautiful things about this new update to the harness is that you have so many options. So play around with it. Just make sure that you're checking for heat and that you do have a nice straight angle down to the frame of the bike. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below and we'll get back to you shortly. And please show us all of your custom setups. Everyone's bike's going to be a little bit different and I can't wait to see how awesome this fits on a huge variety of bikes.